Researchers just published a paper in which they kept brain organoids, yes, the tiny human brains that you can grow in a jar if you want to, alive for five years. Now, if you are not familiar, and if you watch my content, you are probably really familiar. You can take a skin cell or you can harvest fetal brain tissue and you can turn it into a tiny brain. There's a lot of ways to make them and a lot of reasons why you would want to. For the most part, they're made from B cells or skin tissue. The US is a little bit hard to harvest fetal brain tissue. You can take a cell, turn it into a stem cell by giving it the right media and gently coax it into becoming brain tissue. Yes, those are tiny eyes. Yes, they work. They're essentially the optic cups that we would have because eyes are part of our nervous system. They're largely used to test medications and model diseases. You could even have your own little brain organoid made so they could test medications on you prior to giving it to you. Also very valuable for things like brain tumors. Allison Motry at UC San Diego actually grew Neanderthal brain organoids from Neanderthal cells, which is wild. But there is a subset of researchers who want to use them for computation because they are much less energy hungry than standard models, but there's a long way to go there. The more complicated they are, the better they are at computation. And some researchers have claimed sentience. But back to our friends who kept up alive for five years. This is absolutely unprecedented. And for the longest time, people had thought it was because of oxygenation, because they would end up suffering from hypoxia and they wouldn't live very long. But researchers have managed to keep them alive by allowing their nerves to fire. Yes, it turns out that one of the big problems for why they would atrophy is that they eventually just kind of gave up because the media did not support the nervous system functioning. They would essentially eventually give up. When you put them in a media that has oxygen, has food, but also supports neural firing rather than just tampering it, it worked. They didn't atrophy. The experiment ended after five years, but they could have kept them alive longer. Now, researchers did know that at the early stages when you're growing a brain, they look very much like a preterm baby, but the longer they are kept alive, the more they look like their actual chronological age. They also found out that the cells knew how old they were. They had memory of their time spent. So essentially, by the time they got to be five years old, their gene expression was such that it matched what a human toddler would look like. At least in terms of their genes, they also developed age-related cell types. This part is really important to medicine and maybe robotics. When they made chimeras, so mixed the aged cells with younger ones and turned them into a new brain organoid blob, the older cells remembered their age. They continued to have the age-related markers, and the younger ones didn't. They behaved as though they were prenatal. Now, brain organoids do have brain waves, and in the beginning, when people just started to research them, they only had delta brain waves, so the ones that are associated with sleep or being comatose. As they age, they do start to get more complex brain waves, so it's not just delta, the kind that's associated with being asleep. I would like to provide the caution that this does not mean that they are conscious. I mean, consciousness is a pretty high bar. People don't even want to say that cats and dogs are conscious. The traditional demonstration of consciousness requires somebody to recognize themselves in a mirror, although even fish can do that. So it's, it's a strange way that we can provide an explanation for consciousness. I'm going to roll with the medical definition. So aware, awake, alert. Now they do have eyes, so maybe one day they could develop and recognize themselves in a mirror. Although that is a very scary thought, I wonder if we could put them in a robot and give that robot vision and see if they could recognize themselves one day. One day we will all approach these questions. I'll probably be the one telling you about it. Yes, they do have activity that you would expect in a brain. So theta, alpha, beta, gamma brainwaves, things that you would associate more with a wakeful state. They do better when they're dropped into game world. These guys had them play Pong, and since then they've operated a number of robots, spider robots, snake robots, other things. I would really like to see a long-term study of their brainwaves as they are playing a video game. And yes, researchers do believe that they have the building blocks necessary for memory. And in game world, it's been seen that they have both long-term and short-term memory, so long as they are reinforced some way. If they get no feedback at all, they do tend to forget stuff, which I get. So it does seem that the limitation on how long you can keep them alive no longer is a problem. For the longest time, people have been figuring out how to vascularize them because the idea was they couldn't absorb enough oxygen to get to their core, but it may be that they were just bored and atrophying and eventually they stopped sending out electrical signals because they didn't work. 
and they can communicate with the rest of the organoid. These systems are very new, and there are definitely ethical concerns about how much suffering might be imparted on a tiny human brain. Now, most of the researchers you'll talk to are cautious to call them tiny brains. About half, 50-50, whenever I talk to someone who works with these guys wants to anthropomorphize them or not. But I really do think that we should have the conversation about what suffering might mean. Because as we are making them more complex and allowing them to do more tasks, it's possible we may get to a point where suffering should be a consideration. And I do think we should have that conversation before we get there, because the technology is improving. A lot of the most recent research around them has been making them more complex, giving them more cell types, making them larger. It's quite difficult to do because if you want to make a brain, you know, it's kind of designed to happen in a body, but the more similar that we can get to a human brain means it's going to be a better research subject. It's going to be more similar to us people if you want to do things like test medications. But with that, and as we figure out how to keep them entertained, there is always the possibility that us humans may inadvertently create suffering. And that's a conversation worth having, I think. It's very difficult to be a scientist and be excited for your own work and how cool and how creepy it really is and how much good it can do. But there's kind of an issue with people being scared of it. And you have to balance scared of it with actual ethical considerations. I was actually just about to go on the monologue about brain organoids not being conscious because they don't have a sleep-wake cycle, so they don't have the capacity to be conscious and they don't have a brain stem. But I checked on that information and I was wrong. Yes, apparently brain organoids have circadian rhythm. I don't know how to feel about that one and I'll probably make a video just on this and do some reading, but yeah. Apparently, they do have something akin to rest and wakefulness. I mean, in the paper that I had talked about where they had them play Pac-Man, they certainly seemed to enjoy resting for a bit after they were shocked continuously until they got food. So they also got shocked much harder if they got eaten by the ghost. I do feel like that kind of research is a little unethical, and I'm not sure why, but it feels unethical. As always, these papers will be linked. Um, there's also been some research where they gave them melatonin. I personally wish that I slept much, so I'm jealous. I'll leave you with this. People have compared them to hemispherectomies. In a hemispherectomy, at least more modern ones, it's where they disconnect a portion of the brain from the rest of the brain. This can be done for a variety of reasons. It's sometimes done for severe epilepsy when other treatments haven't worked but they leave the old portion of the brain in there. It's essentially in a continuous sleep cycle. It has delta brainwave that looks like someone who is asleep, not too different from the brain organoids. Potentially conscious, at least in this case for human brains, but just cut off from it. I think that's a reasonable consideration. Just what could we make one day? And maybe we should talk about it before we get there because brain organoids do have a fantastic potential to do a whole lot of good. And yes, other people want conscious robots, and I, I kind of want them too, but I, I'm conflicted. I just, I want to see what humans can make. Yeah, I kind of want to play God, and I get it. It's not super ethical, but it is interesting. Follow for more.